everyone. Uh, to those of you who are here early this morning, hello again. And the rest of you, great to be with you. I'm Al Cardenas, the chairman of this great organization, the American Conservative Union. And I hope all of you have been having a great time so far. The, I was only going to ask you to join me in thanking one group. And those are the dozens of young people who gave up their Saturday to make sure that all of us had the best day we possibly could, and to them for their volunteer service and their love of America and the future of our country, I want you to join me in giving them a big hand. Thank you all. Thank you. Well, I want to make uh, very quickly a bit of news before I welcome our next guest, uh, a personal friend and a great guy, and that's uh, in honor of the 50th anniversary of ACU next year. You know, we're the oldest conservative organization in our country and celebrating our 50th anniversary next year. And I wanted to announce our two hallmark events. It's a critical year for conservatives, a critical election year. We want to make sure we do our bit to get uh, conservatives elected and taking over that Senate in Congress. The, uh, we hope you can join us again at the Gaylord Resort and Convention Center in D.C., March 6th through 8th. Uh, for those of you who've never been to that three-day extravaganza with 12,000 people and an incredible agenda and, and, uh, and program, I urge you to consider going. Uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a weekend of your lifetime. It's March 6th through, through the 8th, the greater D.C. area, the greater uh, Gaylord. Uh, also pleased to announce that for the first time we're bringing a regional CPAC to California. Yes, yes, our... our we're going to go to the belly of a beast and tell them what conservatives are all about. And so we're excited to go to California and re-energize those conservatives who deserve our help. So we're going to be in San Diego, and uh, we're going to be there in the Town and Country Resort Convention Center on Saturday, August 9th. And uh, we hope many of you could make it. What a beautiful time of year to be in San Diego. Uh, so, so this gets me to our next speaker, great American, Governor Rick Perry. He's uh, <laughs> devoted his adult life to creating a more prosperous Texas. Lone Star State's 47th governor, he's defended their values, fought for principled solutions to tough challenges, and worked to implement a clear vision for better schools, more jobs, safer communities. You know, I, I know him as one thing, and that is I know him as Mr. Jobs. No one's created more jobs in America than this great governor of the state of Texas, and we're going to hear from him and see how the rest of the country can follow suit. I want you to join me in giving him the welcome he deserves. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the great state of Texas, Rick Perry. Thank you. Kind of an ecstatic group this morning. It's so awesome. Um, you know, and I, I want to I thank Al. He's, uh, matter of fact, all of you who have helped build this uh, conservative uh, majority in this country and, and uh, with what's going on in Washington, um, it's time to rebuild that majority in Washington, D.C. again. When, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that some people just thought it was a stunt when I talked about making Congress part-time. Um, but after $17 trillion in debt, part-time Congress is not a joke. Uh, I happen to think it may be the only solution to this gridlock that we're seeing in Washington now. Um, the only profession with an approval rating similar to Congress is used car salesmen. And, uh, and, and, you know, and at least those guys and gals had the common sense to rebrand themselves and say that they were selling pre-owned vehicles. <laughs> Think about it. You know, I'm encouraged by the fact that CPAC is gathering today in uh, middle America, um, very far from the clubby confines of the Capitol. Uh, I believe that the answers to our economic ills will not be found in Washington It'll be found among the states. It'll be in those capitals far away from Washington, D.C. The culture in Washington is broken. If they, could have, if they could fix it, they would have done that a long time ago. But they can't, 
and I don't think they will. The only hope for America is that the common sense found in Main Street America emerges into a movement that sweeps across this country. And I can promise you this, if ordinary citizens engage in a pitchfork rebellion over debt, deficit, broken entitlement programs, the last place to get the message will be Washington. Washington only changes when the American people force it upon them. We need to turn away from Washington to find answers. We need to look to red states that are outperforming blue states, to states that are cutting taxes, controlling spending, balancing budgets, and creating jobs. The change we're looking for is not a speech with lofty rhetoric. The change we're looking for can be found in the record of governors like Nikki Haley, Susanna Martinez, Rick Scott, Bobby Jindal. South Carolina's moved more than 20,000 citizens from welfare to work. New Mexico's reduced the corporate income tax rates and is now number one in export growth. Florida has added 300,000 jobs in the last two and a half years. Louisiana has created 39,000 jobs in the last 12 months. And that's in addition to the many football players that Bobby is moving from Texas over to Louisiana. <laughs> you know, what is the, what's the common denominator? What's the common element here? Conservative governors who cut taxes, control spending, and invest in jobs. You contrast that. Contrast that with the blue states, and it's very clear. New York and California led the nation in lost personal income to other states. And if you rent a new hall, or excuse me, a U-Haul to move your company, it costs twice as much to go from San Francisco to Austin than the other way around because they need to get those vehicles back to California. <laughs> get it? It's true. It's amazing. That's the economies of what's going on, even down to that small level. The reckless policies of borrowing from future generations to appease the spending appetite of the public unions in California have put that state on a collision course with bankruptcy and financial ruin. My home state is creating jobs faster than any other state in the nation. We've been rated the best place to do business in America for nine years in a row. And it's not rocket science. We cut taxes, we don't spend all the money, we create fair and predictable regulations, and we stop frivolous lawsuits. And because of that, we have an abundance of jobs and revenue demonstrating that while you can't spend your way to prosperity with the right policies, you can grow yourself there. America cannot sustain its current fiscal course. We cannot continue to borrow trillions of dollars from banks in Beijing and Brazil and Tokyo. The downgrading of our credit for the first time two years ago shouldn't have surprised anyone. Our leaders we're fighting over a few billion dollars in spending cuts, while our debt has soared by trillions of dollars in the last five years. Long before our president presided over the downgrading of our credit, he had downgraded our standing in the world. He alienated Israel. He emboldened Iran. He muddled the foreign policy that we saw in the Arab Spring. His latest gambit with Syria was a demonstration of weakness. In a world that needs a strong America, as Dennis Miller put it, <laughs> we got to be the only country in the world that sends out a save the date attack card. It is not in the interest of our nation to give advance warning to the enemy in the nature of a strike. As a former Air Force pilot, I can tell you the first sign of a coming attack from the United States needs to be craters in your soil. So we have to reestablish. 
We have to reestablish America's primacy in the world, and it starts with a foreign policy that Ronald Reagan termed peace through strength. It is not too late for America to lead the world. We can do it again, but only if we get our house in order first. Our national debt is a national security issue. The nationalization of our health care system will only further erode our economy. Borders left unenforced leave us subject to further attacks. It's time for Washington to focus on a few things, a few things and do those very well. Constitutional established goals. Secure the border. Defend our country. Deliver cogent foreign policy. Get out of the health care business. Get out of the education business. Stop hammering industry. Let that sleeping giant known as American industry create prosperity again. That is how we restore America to greatness again. Conservatives will lead that choice. God bless you, and God bless this great country of America. Thank you.